and pull it in starting out. So should I begin or should I wait another minute or so? Are we ready to go? Do you have quorum, you think? Looks like a pretty good crowd. You're ready, Kyle? Are you waiting on anyone? Who could be missing? Yeah, I'm uh, ready, ready whenever. Uh. Ah, okay. I was weirdly muted. All right. Um, Kyle, you were good? You ready to go? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about surgeries on torus knots uh, in particular. Can anyone hear me? No? I can hear you now. I can hear you, Dave. I could, yeah. Can you hear us? hear you furiously pounding the keyboard. You have mic mute problems? Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, Kyle, we can hear you. And um, Dave says in the chat to introduce yourself and go. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. So, okay, thanks. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking about surgeries on torus knots, in particular, which of those bound rational knowledge balls and uh, or something sort of related about uh, surgeries on cables of knots. And uh, yeah, very important that this, uh, to announce that this is joint work with Paolo Cheto, Marco Gola, and Anna Lacona. Okay, so 
here's uh, my introductory slide. So on the Kirby problem list in low-dimensional topology, there's a question by Kasson, which asks, uh, which rational homology three spheres bound rational homology four balls? And uh, so what's a rational homology three sphere? So this is a closed three manifold Y whose homology groups with rational coefficients are isomorphic to those of the three sphere, hence the homology three sphere part. So for example, any non-zero Dane surgery on a knot in S3 will be a rational homology three sphere. So these, these are closed three manifolds with simple homology. And uh, we can ask uh, which of these bound rational homology four ball. So a rational homology four ball is you know, essentially the same definition as this, except we replace S3 with the four ball. So now these are four manifolds with boundary with simple uh, rational homology. So every closed uh, oriented three manifold bounds uh, some four manifold. Um, but uh, we get a variety of interesting questions if we put some restrictions on, uh, on you know, properties of those four manifolds. And so this is one way to do that. We can ask which of these uh, three manifolds uh, with simple homology, which of these bound the simplest possible four manifolds homologically speaking? And it turns out uh, not all of them do. It is an interesting question. And uh, let me just point out, so I gave talks uh, a year ago that uh, were on similar subjects. And I introduced this uh, group, the uh, Rational Homology Cohortism Group in dimension three. So this is a group, you, take, you form this by taking the set of all Rational Homology three spheres, you mod out by the equivalence relation of Rational Homology Cohortism. And uh, this emits a group structure where the, the group operation is connected sum. And it turns out that you know, if a three manifold bounds a Rational Homology four, a four ball, that's equivalent to being it's trivial. Good. No, it wasn't a delivery. It was the return. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, anyways, I think this is an interesting way to phrase this question. Uh, you know, you could you could phrase this question in terms of, of this group, uh, but this is not, uh, you know, not 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 necessary for this talk. I only mentioned this in, in passing. And let me point out the sort of obvious thing, which is that you know, there's no hope of ever answering this question. In fact, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine you know, what form an answer would actually come, a complete answer, right? It's just sort of uh, hopelessly uh, too big of a question. However, the, uh, we have had some notable progress. So uh, uh, Liska in the mid 2000s classified which lens spaces and also connected sums of lens spaces bound rational homology balls. So this is a complete answer if we restrict to, uh, if we restrict our attention to lens spaces or connected sums of lens spaces. And uh, that uses uh, techniques that, uh, we also will uh, use uh, in, in this work that I'm about to describe. Lens spaces are uh, examples of cipher fiber spaces. And so there are, you know, there's actually quite a bit of work uh, about this question where we restrict to certain families of cipher fiber spaces. And so there's a paper by Green and Yabuka. The, the cipher fiber spaces in question there are double branch covers of three stranded pretzel knots. There's a couple of paper couple papers by Lacona, uh, where she addresses this question for certain families of cipher fiber spaces. And uh, there's also some papers by Owens and Sturl, Sturla and uh, Issa McCoy, uh, sort of about similar topics, in particular, you know, which uh, cipher fiber space is bound, say, negative definite four manifold, something like this. And it, it has relevance to, to this question. So, but this is not exhaustive. I just wanted to, to list some of the uh, more notable contributions. Okay, so in, in why cipher fiber spaces? Well, these are nice three manifolds uh, from a different perspective. So they have a nice, they have nice topological descriptions, as surgeries, as boundaries of uh, plumbings, and uh, they also have invariants that are quite computable. And so this is a, a natural restriction uh, on this big question of Kasten, which is you know uh, too too large to really address. And uh, our theorem fits into this context, right? So this is uh, one way to state uh, our main theorem, that uh, there exists a classification of which positive integral surgeries on positive torus knots, TPQ bound rational homology balls. And it fits into this uh, framework because these, uh, it, it turns out, and I'll mention this later, that these are all cipher fiber spaces. So it fits into this 
uh, sort of one uh, groove that we've been able to make progress on this question. Okay, so uh, so I didn't want to draw a torus knot, so I stole this from Wikipedia. This is uh, the minus three eight torus knot. So this is a negative torus knot. That's because these crossings are, are negative crossings. So you can imagine taking the mirror of this picture and you'll get a positive torus knot where all the crossings are positive. And um, we do Dane surgery, right? So we're, we're doing some Dane surgery, integral Dane surgery, in fact, positive integral surgery on um, torus knot. And so what do we do? Well, we take a neighborhood of this torus knot and the three sphere and we delete it. And then we glue in, well, so a neighborhood of a knot is solid torus. So we glue back in a solid torus by some gluing map. And uh, this integer n determines the gluing. So I won't go into the details. I imagine you know almost all of you are, have seen Dane surgery before. So uh, this integer n tells us how we do this uh, regluing. We glue in the solid torus. And uh, since this is a positive integer, it means there's actually associated four manifold, the trace of the surgery. So we, we could also think of attaching a four dimensional two handle along our knot with framing n. And the boundary will be uh, this, this three manifold, this uh, surgery. Okay, so, and you know, we think this is a nice family of uh, three manifolds. Torus knots are uh, a special family of knots and uh, it's natural to consider Dane surgery on these knots. And, and we wanted to uh, give a classification for which of these bound rational homology balls and, that, and that's what we're able to do. Let me point out that uh, previously, uh, two of our co-authors, Paolo Cheto and Marco Gola, had given a class classification in the special case that uh, Q is congruent to plus or minus one mod P. And this on the surface seems sort of arbitrary, but I'll point out, you know, in, when I get to the argument, uh, which may not be until next week, uh, or this part of the argument, you'll, you'll see that actually this comes up sort of naturally and it provides a, uh, a simplification uh, of the argument. I noticed that there's lots of chat activity. Am I missing an important question? Maybe Dave has answered. I think the chat questions have been answered. What's a rational homology cobordism? Okay, okay, well, thank you for the, the team effort. And uh, if, I don't, if I don't see something, as always, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask. Okay, so well, here's a, we could take a little uh, psychology or personality test, uh, which is, you know, do you like this theorem statement? I, I personally like it, you know, it's clean, uh, you know, it's short, it's relatively simple, but a valid uh, objection would be, okay, well, what, what sort of theorem statement is this? You're just, uh, you know, positing a classification, you know, what is the classification? In order to not disappoint those of you with that mentality, here is the same theorem, uh, written more truthfully. So th this is the classification. In fact, th this is, is not uh, the full picture because you'll see there are several uh, sequences. These are recursively defined sequences, for example, here. And I haven't uh, defined what these are. So you know this is more truthful, but it's not uh, the full the full picture won't fit on one slide. And it's not, uh, not, not really important, but... Um, Okay, so this is this is actually a classification. There are these 18 families. And uh, well, since I have two lectures, uh, I can maybe go a bit slower and point out something. So this breaks down into uh, several groups. So if I look at families six through 13, so these, uh, these are all going to be uh, connected sums of two lens spaces. So it turns out that this corresponds to when we do PQ surgery on the torus knot TPQ. So this is the, these are reducible surgeries. Um, yeah, just notice, so as you see here, the, we have these triples. The first two are define the torus knot and the, la the, the last one is the surgery coefficient. And so here, for example, we see that we're doing, uh, you know, PQ surgery on the torus knot TPQ. Uh, these are, uh, reducible, we connect the sums of two lens spaces. From 14 through 18, these are lens space surgeries. Uh, 
So this corresponds to, we're doing surgery on TPQ and the surgery coefficient is PQ plus or minus one in this case. So torus knots emit lens-based surgeries when we have uh, these surgery coefficients. And uh, the first five families, these are uh, three-legged cipher fiber uh, families. So these are cipher fiber spaces with three singular fibers. So uh, if you've uh, paid close attention, you, you'll remember that uh, I said Liska classified which uh, lens spaces and which connected sums of lens spaces bound rational homology balls. So these uh, families six through 18, these appeared in, in Liska's work. Um, and so it's a matter of bookkeeping, right? So we have lens spaces and connected sums of lens spaces that appear as Dane surgery on a torus knot. And then we have uh, Liska's list of which of these uh, manifolds, lens spaces and connected sums of lens spaces bound rational homology balls. And it's just a matter of comparing these two lists. And so it's bookkeeping, but in fact, uh, non, non trivial, quite a, you know, it's quite a, a headache to, to uh, put these lists together. But Kyle, was it already known which, like, you? Were you implying that it was already known which lens space, sorry, which torus knot surgeries give connected sums of lens spaces? Uh, no, so I don't think anyone had gone through the work of uh, figuring out, you know, so Liska has this list. He has several infinite families of all, this is restricted lens spaces, all lens spaces that bound rational homology balls. But in that presentation, it isn't, it isn't clear which of those actually arise as uh, surgery on a torus knot. And so it's essentially comparing two lists. I don't think anyone else had done this, uh, this work because it's actually quite tedious, but uh, you know. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is at some point you have to reject things, right? At some point you have to say, these things don't bound rational homology balls, or maybe you say these things aren't, surgery on these things is not a connected sum of two lens spaces or. Yeah, so if I understand, I think, so then the argument goes like this. So. We're considering, uh, say, TPQ. If uh, it's PQ surgery, well, this is a connected sum of two lens spaces. We get, you can determine what, what are the two lens spaces, and then you consult uh, Liska's list, and you see if it's on the list or not. Same thing if it's PQ plus or minus one surgery. These are uh, lens spaces. You consult Liska's list, and you see if it's, if it's on it. If uh, the surgery coefficients are neither PQ nor PQ plus or minus one, then a cipher fiber with three singular fibers and that's our, our larger analysis. So in this case, we, we determine uh, exactly which of these bound rational homologies are not. And this oh, is I see. You're saying that everything that's not a lens space or a connected sum of two lens spaces is going to be cipher fiber with three singular fibers. That's right. And then the only ones of those that actually do the, I see, that only that have the rational homology ball condition are one through five. Yeah. I see. And among one through five, uh, if you consider, you know, Remember, I told you this condition about Q being congruent to P, uh, excuse me, congruent to plus or minus one mod P. That had already been taken care of by Cheto and Gola. And that's uh, the only family that's not on that list is actually four. <laughs> so, really, the, the meat of what we did is uh, so the heart of the argument is if you have surgery on a torus knot and the surgery coefficient is uh, neither PQ nor PQ plus or minus one, these are taken care of by Liska's work. And Q is not congruent to plus or minus one mod P, then there's exactly this uh, single family that bounds rational homology balls and none of the others do. So uh, Vodin has a question. Is this the best possible presentation of the classification or is there a better set of families? Um, this is the best, best that I know of. So I don't think there is an easy, easy way to uh, simplify this list. So is it known that the surgery on PQ torus knot is cipher fibered with at most three fibers? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so I'll come back to that later. Uh, okay. um, but yeah, and in fact, there's, there's, uh, it's, not a, there's not a, it's not hard to see that it's cipher fibered. To actually pin down the, uh, the cipher invariance, which we'll need, is mm -hmm. more tedious. Mm -hmm. So is that, that's the bulk of the work? of yeah. identifying 
what surgeries are what cipher fibration? Oh, no, no, no. So no. That, that's a class, classical. That, that's a yeah. Okay. Most of the work is going to be, you know, well, it has to do with embedding lattices. So I'll come back to this uh, later. Okay, but so, so you know that the surgery on a PQ torus knot is ciphered fibered. So that's classical. You know, it's known it's ciphered fibered and it's known given P and Q and N what ciphered invariants they are. Exactly. So right. Just... And then, so if you understand, so then you only need to understand for those, which one the length spaces, which are the length spaces, because those are dealt with by Liska. And then for what's left over, you need to have a classification, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Are the cipher invariants just P, Q, and N? Uh, no, no. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be well. Uh, yeah, let me come back to it. So it's uh, it's not just P, Q, and N. But uh, I appreciate the questions. Any, any other questions before we continue on? Okay. So. Okay, so here's, here's a natural question. What about negative integral surgery? So this is a classification of positive integral surgeries on positive no torus knots. So the property of bounding a rational homology ball is independent orientation, right? If you reverse the orientation on the, the homology ball, it reverses the orientation on the boundary. So in particular, we also have a classification for negative integral surgeries on negative torus knots just by reversing orientations. So up to orientation reversal, the only other interesting case is negative integral surgeries on positive torus knots. And uh, it turns out that we do know one thing. We know that if, uh, say, we have minus n surgery on the torus knot TPQ, if it bounds a rational homology ball, then n has to be either one or four. So we can exclude all other uh, you know, negative integral surgeries. And so you think, OK, we're making great progress. But it turns out that, uh, in fact, not. So even, even with this restriction, the, the question is, is wide open. And you know, my favorite example to illustrate this is uh, what this says in the question, right? So take minus four surgery on the right-handed trefoil. So a very nice, uh, simple three manifold. And uh, it's still unknown if this bounds a rational homology ball. So quite, quite surprising, I think, uh, that, that we can't answer this. So the standard obstructions fail and the standard constructions uh, also fail. So. Uh, yeah, quite, quite a dramatic failure of being able to, to address the case for negative integral surgeries. Let me mention one other example. So if we take minus one surgery on the trefoil, the right-handed trefoil, so this is free square sphere it's sigma 237, this does bound a rational homology ball. So if you were at the joint uh, seminar talk I gave at Georgia Tech in the spring, you heard me talk about, about this. The fact that sigma 237 bounds a rational homology ball, this is a classical uh, result of Fentuchel and Stern. But the point is, it's a, it's a very non trivial construction. So uh, these breeze corn spheres, these are integral homology spheres. And so you can ask whether an integral homology sphere bounds an integral homology ball. In fact, uh, sigma 237 doesn't, it has non trivial Ruckman invariant. Uh, but it does bound a rational homology ball, right? So this rational homology ball is. Uh, in particular, not an integral homology ball. And that in turn forces, uh, uh, requires the existence of three handles. And, and three handles in four dimensional topology often introduce uh, extra complexity. So uh, these are two examples one where we can't answer the question, and another where we, we do know the answer, but in fact, uh, it's, it's non trivial. And so this points to something sort of mysterious about. Uh, negative integral surgeries on positive torus knots. And I don't have, you know, uh, it's a natural question, well, why? And I don't have a, a some sort of deep philosophical reason for this. Maybe you guys uh, do. Anyways, this is, this is something to consider. Um, okay, so um, it's one thing to, to point out. So another thing, that I think is interesting that we can extract from this uh, big theorem is, is the following uh, the following picture. So, um, so we define a set S which consists of rational numbers Q over P 
uh, such that the torus knot TPQ admits some surgery, some integral surgery, uh, positive integral surgery uh, that bounds a rational ball. So right, we have a complete classification of, uh, of which of these bound rational balls, and we just uh, forget the surgery coefficient, and we just essentially uh, take the information uh, coming from the torus knot. So we look at all Q over P such that the corresponding torus knot emits a surgery bounding rational ball. So this is some uh, set of points uh, in the rationals, and and, and we have we, so our, our theorem gives a complete uh, picture of this set, right? So we know exactly what this set is from from our, our theorem, and each infinite family in the theorem uh, determines an accumulation point, a limit point, right? So um, we have this corollary, which is you know, so the set of accumulation points for the set S uh, consists of uh, these numbers here, where phi is the golden ratio, and we have this uh, other irrational number. Uh, phi. And moreover, our, our, the set is bounded. Okay, so I mean, I think this is, uh, you know, well, it's more interesting uh, when we realize that we can generalize this to, to other, other knots. And let me describe how that goes. First, let me point out, so the interesting thing here uh, that I'll, I'll mention, I'll discuss more about is that we have two integral accumulation points, one and four. And these uh, correspond to, or at first it's just sort of interesting observation is that these are exactly the positive integral surgeries on the unknot that uh, bound uh, rational homology balls. So one surgery on the unknot, this of course is S3, bounds B4. And if we do four surgery on that knot, this is this, uh, well, plus or minus depending on your conventions, the lens space L41. And these both, uh, both of these bound rational homology balls. So this is, an interesting fact that we'll return to. But those, but those S's are Q over P's, not N's, right? Yes, yes, that's right, yeah, so, yeah. So that's sort of weird that it, the N values are showing up in the accumulation points for the S's, for the Q over P's. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, and so we'll explain and generalize this in a moment. Um, so if we want to generalize this, uh, we can do that as follows. So torus knots happen to be cables of the end knot. And so we can consider cables of other knots. And so um, let's think about how best to introduce this, right? Let me, let me draw an example. Okay. So here's a torus knot. This is T32, this is a truffle. And if I have some other knot, K, I can form the PQ cable of it by essentially uh, taking this, uh, this torus knot, the PQ torus knot, and uh, you know, tie the knot K into it. And so well, one picture, which maybe is not helpful unless you've thought about this before. This. Okay, so I take this torus knot and I tie a knot K into it. So this is the, this is a cable, PQ. Okay, so let, let me say it again. So if you have a knot K, you can take a tubular neighborhood of the knot, which will be a solid torus. And then you can uh, essentially identify a torus knot sitting on a boundary of torus with that uh, tubular neighborhood. This will define a, a cable and it's gonna wrap P times around in the longitudinal direction and Q times in the meridional direction. So let me know if you want me to say more, probably most of you are, probably most of you know more about cables than, than I do. And we observe that, well, torus knots are cables of the end knot. So maybe we could define something similar with uh, arbitrary uh, knots K. And in fact, in fact that's what we, we do. So we get this definition down here. So S of K, well, so for any knot K in S3, what we do is we look at uh, PQ cables of K and we consider which of these admit some uh, positive integral surgery that bounds a rational homology ball. And if we do, we record uh, the, the cabling coefficients, if you will, Q over P in the set. So what we have before, we have that S is essentially 
uh, S of U. So this, this generalizes our, our previous definition. So we look at, for a given knot K, we look at which cables uh, emit surgeries that bound a rational homology ball. And, uh, yeah, we want to go back to this question that, you know, that we saw before, that the integral accumulation points for S were precisely the positive integral surgeries on a knot which bound rational homology balls. And perhaps this generalizes to uh, the situation here. And in fact, uh, it does. So we have this uh, theorem. Let me uh, first look, look at the second part, right? So this is the, the, the real punchline. So if uh, N surgery on K bounds a rational homology ball, then uh, we get that N is an accumulation point, a limit point for the set S of K. So this uh, is precisely what we saw with the set S. And this, in some sense, explains it. It actually says that there's some general uh, phenomenon uh, going on here. And the way we prove that is, well, by this, this first part of the theorem, right? So it, essentially, this is a corollary of the first part, which says that, so for not k in S3 and in an integer, then for every integer m greater than 1, there exists a rational homology cobordism between n surgery on k and uh, the surgery here on the cable, right? This is M squared N surgery on the M, MN plus one cable of K. So in fact, I'll, I'll show you where this comes from on the next slide. The reason why this uh, gives the, the highlighted statement as a corollary is, so imagine that N, uh, that N surgery on K bounds a rational homology ball. So if this bounds a rational homology ball and these two manifolds are rational homology cobordant, then that means uh, this surgery on the cable also bounds a rational homology ball. And hence, uh, the coefficients mn plus 1 over m, this belongs to the set S of k. And as, late, as you let m go to infinity, the limit of uh, q over p here is, uh, is n. So we get that n is a, an accumulation point for the set S of k. So I realize it's sort of a, a bizarre construction, a bizarre definition. So I'll pause it in case there are any uh, questions or, or comments here. I feel like I have a question, but I can't formulate it. Um, so, so this has nothing to do with the, at least of, as, so far as we can tell, with the, the appearance of the golden ratio in the lens space one, right? No. I mean, in the torus knot. Yeah. The golden ratio appears because so there's several recursive sequences if you go back to the statement of the big theorem. And in fact, the Fibonacci uh, sequence appears sort of mysteriously, but and I, I don't have a, a good explanation for why that is. What it uh, amounts to is that we have these family of lattices, families of plumbings. And these families, uh, if you convert you know, the, the information coming from the graph to the information as a surgery, you pick up some recursive sequences. And in one case, you get the Fibonacci sequence. And you know, I wish I had a, a deep reason why, but, but I don't have it. I guess my other question is, so the, um, the statements about accumulation point, go, going back to the just the torus knot si situation, yeah. the statement about accumulation points, is it more or less a lot? I mean, is it? Um, it seems coarser than the like complete list. Yeah, you're throwing away the surgery coefficient information. Okay, right. So you could, could can you, is it actually formally coarser or could you rec recover the complete list from that information about accumulation points in principle, uh, if you're clever? No, it's, it's, it's coarser. So okay. it turns out, so work of uh, Chato and Gola, this earlier paper I alluded, uh, I alluded to, so the, one of the things they prove actually, it's a nice result is that if you have a, integral surgery on a knot, at most, let's say positive integral surgery on a knot, at most two integers, you can, it can bound a rational homology ball. So what that means is that- Say it that, once again. Sorry? Say it once again, the last sentence. Yeah, sure. So if you do integral, positive integral surgery on some knot K, mm -hmm. uh, at most uh, two surgery coefficients, at most two integers can bound a rational homology ball. Mm -hmm. And so if you go back to this, uh, you know, our, so if you go back to the set here, for each one of these rational numbers, you know that at least one surgery bounds a rational homology ball. 
uh, but possibly two and no more than that. And so that's, there's extra information that you would have to, to check to recover the whole list. So, but uh, yeah, to, to maybe to repeat myself. So sort of the surprising thing here is that this, these, uh, these sets, they recover uh, which integral surgeries on the original knot bound rational homology ball. And one interesting question is, it, is if the converse is true? And we don't know this, right? So uh, it's unknown if, you know, perhaps it would be quite interesting, the converse, right? So perhaps if you have this set and if it has an integral accumulation point M, then maybe uh, that forces M surgery on the original knot K to, to bound the rational homology ball. Uh, but, that, but that we don't know. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and improve this theorem by constructing. Okay, so if, you, if you have a rational homology cobordism and uh, one of them bounds the rational homology ball, then the other one does too, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, so, and that's how you, you that's why this uh, second statement. So that's how you get those pairs. I see. Okay. Okay, so to prove this, so we're going to construct a rational homology cobordism. Uh, from N surgery on K to the surgery on the mm -hmm. table. And I'll point out that there's something similar when N is zero that appears in a paper by Cochrane, Franklin, Hedden, and Horn. So here is the uh, proof. Don't let this uh, frighten you. So uh, I'll go through this uh, uh, piece by piece. So this involves uh, various you know, handle moves and uh, operations. I will say if you're completely uncomfortable with this, it's essentially, it'll be just this one slide and then we'll go on to other things. So uh, don't worry, we're, this won't be, the, won't be the remainder of my two talks. Well, it may be the remainder of today based on, you know, uh, if you have questions, but uh, I, don't, I don't think it will be. Okay, so here we start with uh, end surgery on our not K, right? So you, the idea is you have set, you know, you take your not K, you tie it into this, uh, this strand and you, so this is one way to, to represent the picture, right, for an arbitrary not K. You can convert this to a surgery diagram where we have zero surgery on K at the expense of introducing a meridian to our diagram with surgery coefficient minus one over N. And so you can go from uh, left to right here, either by, you know, doing a Rolfson twist or a re reverse slam dunk. Uh, so these are, you know, two, uh, common moves in surgery diagram. So we can rep represent our three manifold like this. This is still uh, the three manifold. And now we're going to uh, add four dimensional handles. So one way of thinking about it is, you know, you take this, this three manifold here and in this diagram, I can denote that by putting brackets on these surgery coefficients. And so you should think of these two as your three manifold. You take your three manifold cross the interval and then you can add uh, four dimensional handles, right? So say this is your three manifold Y, you cross it with the interval. This is Y cross the interval. And then we're going to add uh, four dimensional handles uh, on top of it. And here we add a single four dimensional one handle represented by this uh, a knot with a dot on it, right? So this is a one handle and dotted circle notation. And we add a single four dimensional two handle. That's uh, this, this handle here with framing zero. So this is, a, in fact, a cobordism, right? So this picture here describes a four-dimensional cobordism. The lower boundary is uh, the three-manifold we started with, which is N surgery on K. And we've added a four-dimensional one handle and a four-dimensional two handle. And notice, so this four-dimensional one handle, this uh, creates a generator of H1 of our cobordism. And this two handle uh, runs, well, in this case, three, but in general, M time. So it's a good time to bring up, right? So in general, there's going to be M full twists here. And so with this two handle, right? So you've added a generator to H1 by this one handle and the two handle runs M times over the one handle and kills M times the generator. So in other words, uh, this, this shows that H1 of this cobordism is Z mod M. So with rational coefficients, H1 will be trivial H2 uh, will also be uh, trivial. And so this picture here, this is a 
uh, rational homology cobordism that we built, starting with the uh, surgery on K. And what remains to be seen is, well, what is the uh, upper boundary component, right? So we have, we built this cobordism. Uh, boundary minus is N surgery on K. Let me write that here. So this is N surgery on K. And we want to know what is this upper uh, three dimensional boundary component. And that's what we determine in the rest of these pictures, right? So we can convert this from uh, thinking of this as a cobordism to thinking of this as the uh, resulting three manifold boundary by just considering uh, this whole thing as a surgery diagram where we convert this dotted circle to uh, zero surgery on the uh, corresponding n naught. So this picture here, if this, let's say the, if the cobordism is W, this is going to be uh, W plus, right? The, the upper boundary component. Okay, and so the claim is that, well, this should be some surgery on a cable of K, right? And you can, your eyes can glance down here, right? This is the, the final answer, right? The claim is that this is what we have. To see that, well, we have to do a cancellation. So um, we take this uh, surgery component and we can slide it over uh, the, our original knot K. So I drew that here. This is a one, this is one such slide, or I've slid the rightmost component over K. <clears throat> Since K has zero framing in this picture, it doesn't change the framing. And uh, it's maybe hard to see, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you that what we've done is we've reduce the linking number between uh, these two components here by one, right? So you could take this strand here and slide it through this, uh, this band. So we've reduced the, the linking number by one, right? So if uh, here we had M, uh, linking number M, now we're down to M minus one. And then we repeat. So in this picture, M is three, so we should do three handle slides. And after three handle slides, <clears throat> excuse me, this middle component here will be completely unlinked from the, the rightmost component, which means that it'll just be a meridian to the knot K. So after doing these uh, handle slides, we'll have a zero frame meridian to our knot K. And in a surgery diagram, this, all, this allows us to erase the two components. So we can erase the, the two components. Whenever we have a, a surgery component with a zero frame meridian, we can remove those from the diagram. And that leaves us uh, this picture here. So we've uh, done a, you know, you can think of it as cancellation if you want. So we've removed two components. We're left with this picture here. An isotopy results in this picture. So this, um, there's an isotopy that goes from this to, to this picture here. And we already see that we have a cable uh, of our knot K. If we do a Rolfson twist on this, uh, this extra component, That'll change the framing from zero to m squared times n, and I'll introduce n full twists. So these are n full twists. And then we get exactly what we uh, wanted. So this is m squared times n surgery on the torus knot m comma mn plus one. And that, that's the argument. Uh, is there any point that you want me to? Uh, so that, that m squared n, that's just the standard formula when you, for the Rolfson twist, if you got m strands going through and one over n twisted, I mean, a one over n on not minus one over n on not, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is, yeah, if you look up in Gobbs dipshits, the Rolfson twist, it'll tell you right. how the framing is changing this exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and the torus knot is M, M, N plus one, because there's M strands going around. That gives the first M, and then it would intersect. I mean, it, yeah. Um, well, it's not the torus knot, it's the cable, right? The cable. Yeah, the K cable. Of... Yeah, so there's M strands. You wrote T. You wrote T. But if K was an unknot, then you would have M, M. The torus. Right. M, yeah, M, yeah. M plus one torus knot. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 And so these M, these N full twists, this introduces the MN, and then you have yeah. this. Uh, yep. Good. Good.
Perfect. Okay, so um, I'd be happy to say more about any, any of these steps if you want, but I will move on. Um, I want to point out uh, sort of a, what I think is interesting correlator. Maybe I'm the only one in the world, but uh, it's interesting to me. So uh, last fall, I gave uh, a couple of talks and one of them, uh, I discussed this uh, homomorphism from the integral homology caborism group to the rational homology caborism group induced by inclusion. And that's because you know, to be an integral homology sphere, this is more restrictive than being a rational homology sphere. So every integral homology sphere in particular is also a rational homology sphere. So we have this uh, nice homomorphism and there's lots of interesting questions about this. And one thing we proved, so this was a theorem with uh, Paolo Aceto, was that if you look at the image of Psi, this is a nice subgroup of the rational homology caborism group. Uh, and you consider its intersection with the L. So this is the subgroup generated by length spaces. So again, it's a nice subgroup of the rational homology Borson group. And we prove that uh, they intersect in the, 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 at the identity. So uh, they intersect trivially, which means, so different ways of saying this, but so this means that if you have a length space, so what, is it, what does it mean if something's in an intersection here, right? A length space is in this intersection if it's rational homology coordinate to an integral homology sphere. What we showed is that under that situation, in fact, it bounds uh, a rational homology ball. And so, in fact, you know, so the context is this. So, uh, I'm curious how to find you know elements in the image. And it turns out it's, it's not so easy, right? This theorem says that, well, lens spaces, you know, you never have a, a lens space representing a non-trivial non element in the image. Um, but this uh, previous construction actually gives us a way to construct elements in the image. So, so what's the context here, right? So find elements in the image of Psi. And uh, by the previous uh, construction, if we take plus or minus one surgery on a not K, then this is rational homology cohortant. So rational homology cohortant to M squared surgery on the M M plus one cable. Or maybe plus or minus here. And so this is a integral homology sphere, right? Plus or minus one surgery on a knot is an integral homology sphere. And hence, uh, that tells us that these are in the image, right? The rational homology coordinate to an integral homology sphere. And so this tells us that, uh, so this tells us that uh, this belongs to the image of psi. Okay, so like I said, you know, I may be the only one who's interested in this, but nonetheless, I, I find it interesting. And the context is that, uh, Oftentimes, uh, the constructive side, I think, is quite challenging and perhaps uh, underlooked, right? So here's a constructive problem, right? Find a rational homology sphere that represents a non-trivial element uh, in the image of this uh, homomorphism. And in fact, this is the, the only way I know how to do it, right? I don't know of any other uh, nice nice constructions. So something, something to, to think about, perhaps. Okay, so now we're going to uh, sort of uh, switch uh, directions and I only, know, I, I only have a few more minutes. So most of this will be relegated to next week, but uh, now we want to return to sort of the main, the main theorem. And like I said, this, uh, we use the fact that these surgeries are cipher fiber spaces. So um, here's actually the statement, right? So uh, this is, here we see the actual cipher invariance. So if we do end surgery on the torus knot TPQ, the claim is that we get a cipher fiber space where uh, we have these cipher invariants. In particular, we have P over Q star. Q star is the inverse of uh, Q mod P. And then we have Q over P star, right? So same with P, P star is the inverse of P mod Q. And then we get PQ minus N over PQ minus N minus one. And so, well, so here, here's a nice uh, description of a uh, cipher fiber space with three singular fibers. So 
we have this uh, first uh, number B, this is supposed to be an integer. And then we have uh, these three rational numbers. These correspond to rational surgeries on, on meridians. Um, so this is a, a nice way of thinking about a second fiber space with three singular fibers. Um, so this is a rational surgery diagram, but we can convert this to an integral surgery diagram by, by using the slam dunk operation. So we can convert this to something as follows. Uh, and maybe I'll try to be somewhat careful. So, no, let me not, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm not going to do over under crossings <laughs> for my own sanity's sake. So I can convert this to the following picture where we have this component here, and then we have these uh, chains and they're all linked in the appropriate way. Um, and we have uh, three of them of some you know, indeterminate length. And uh, the way these diagrams are related, this is still B, and let's just take one leg. Let's say this is A1, A2, A3, A4, out to A, N. And say this corresponds to R1. So R1 is a rational number. And if we look at its continued fraction expansion, that's where we get these coefficients here. So if we write this as a negative continued fraction, we would get this as A1 minus one over A2 minus one over A3, so on down to A, N. So this is a negative continued fraction expansion. Often we'll write it uh, like this. Okay, and so the nice thing here is that, uh, well, this is the integral surgery diagram. And so it, in particular, it corresponds to, uh, there's a corresponding four manifold. This is gonna be a plumbed uh, four manifold. Um, and uh, our argument will, will rely heavily on this uh, plumbed uh, four manifold. This in turn can be uh, drawn uh, as a plumbing graph where we have some central vertex with weight B and then we have these uh, other legs. So often, you know, we'll, we'll see lots of these uh, plumbing graphs. Uh, any questions on, on this uh, background information? Uh, so does it correspond to any kind of a singularity, a surface singularity um, in any cases? Uh, yes, at least. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. so the answer is yes, but uh, I, I could tell you, I couldn't tell you what the, the singularity is. So there is this rich uh, world of singularity theory that's uh, uh, often you know, related to what we're doing, but I, I'm looking at these things strictly from the topological perspective. Okay, thanks. What was the question? Maybe, oh, I, I, maybe I can answer it after the talk. The, 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 the ciphered fiber three space, the, is it boundary of a singularity? There should be some singularity where this is the resolution. So, I mean, the, this graph is the, is the resolution the resolution to, right this is the, there's the smoothing and there's the resolution and this graph right. is the resolution right. right but this is uh um it, it's not always a it's not always the case right for any any r1 r2 r3 is it uh always the no case? i think you're right it's complicated as to which ones are are really singularities and which ones aren't corresponding to be like a negative definite or you know it should be a definite uh plumbing right Oh, anyways. Um, so I'm basically out of time. So uh, I'll just show the same picture. So in our cases, so what I'll resume talking about uh, next week is we'll go back to uh, uh, this classification and I'll restrict to the case that N is between one and PQ minus two. So this is gonna be a cipher fiber space with three singular fibers as this uh, above theorem uh, says. And uh, this will be the corresponding uh, plumbing graph. And the argument proceeds by considering uh, embeddings of the, the corresponding lattice. And this is what I'll, I'll discuss um, uh, next time. But uh, let me go ahead and stop there for today. Cool. Cool.
Let's unmute and thank Kyle. I'll, I'll open things up for questions, but but first, just don't forget that we, we're uh, those who want to talk about topology courses should stick around after me. So if you're thinking of slipping out early, um, don't forget we're going to talk about um, next year's topology courses. But um, uh, any other questions for Kyle? You, you mentioned, I, I guess I have a question. You mentioned some relation between the recursions and some particular lattice structures. Um, I'm, did, I, did I miss some part of the detail of that or did it skip over? No, I, I didn't give any details. And in fact, I'll probably have time next week to, to look at at least one example. And so we're actually, we're going to get uh, you know, families of uh, graphs like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the families will be related in, in some sort of, you know, graph way, right? They'll be repeated, uh, you know, you'll have components that are repeated. And uh, if you take these families of graphs, and when you convert them back into the uh, surgery description, you'll get these recursive uh, sequences. Okay. okay. Anything else? So uh, am I understanding it right that so uh, your main technique of construction is to add a pair of canceling um, handle and then try to manipulate the Kirby calculus and get the expression that you, you want? Uh, no, so yeah, that the, the Kirby calculus argument was proving a, sort of like a side result. Um, and uh, for the main theorem, most of the argument has to do with embeddings of lattices. So this is the uh, obstruction side, right? So we'll have some, oh, right. for a given uh, surgery, it's related to this plumbing graph and we're going to consider uh, embeddings of the corresponding lattice into the standard lattice. All those, you know, using so Donaldson's theorem is in the background. I'll, I'll explicitly state that next time. And that'll be the obstructive case. And it turns out, that uh, at least in what's left for us to prove, there's a single family that will actually admit embeddings, all the other ones we can obstruct. And for that single family, there is a separate argument, which is actually, okay, constructing the rational homology ball. And I think we'll have time to, to actually show you that construction too. So that's a, a separate thing is actually constructing the rational balls. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Anything else? Okay, thanks, Kyle. Um, clap one more time, and then I'll stop the recording. Um, stop the.